All right, this video is going to be uh, a little bit different. It's we're gonna we're gonna put in a wood bed in a C10 Chevy truck. Yeah, that's not that different. There's like a crap load of videos on it, except that uh, we're gonna use something a little different. This particular truck that I've been building, uh, the theme of it is really reliability and uh, ease of maintenance. So everything's. Like everything that can be stainless steel is stainless steel, the brakes, exhaust, um, fuel lines, um, any nut and bolt, any, any bolt or nut that I took out or screw went back stainless, every single one. The only ones that aren't stainless are the ones that hold the frame together because they got to be um, number eight hardened steel. Well, I think if your frame bolts, suspension bolt stretch, that would probably suck. So, um, what I'm going to do is I've got the product, I'm gonna post it up here. It's um, it's like a Trex type of material, it's a plastic lumber. So it, it's not gonna fade, it'll sit on people's decks for 20 years, it's got a bazillion year guarantee against fading. Uh, the one problem with uh, this material, if you space the supports apart too far, it'll sag and, and uh, warp. But I'm talking like two feet. If you go too far apart, it'll start to sag. And if I set something heavy in the truck, in the heat, with that kind of a span, it might sag. So what I've done is I've put, I've put in a buttload of cross members to support it. I don't think, I think the biggest one is uh, 11 inches span, and the rest are down to 6 and 8 inches. But this isn't going to go in all that easy. It's going to require some work. You know, we'll take a look at what we're going to need to do here. I've had to mill these a little different. I have the drawings on how to mill these to fit this and what you need to do, and I'm gonna I'll put a link down at the bottom and I'll I'll show it at the end. Uh, mine's a little different because if you look at the back of the bed, that panel's all banged up. And I replaced everything else, but I didn't replace this part because that lip on the bottom is a uh, one inch by four inch stainless steel. L it goes all along the back of that even though I painted it black and I didn't want to replace that so that means that the lips a little lower so I have to mill the top out also this I wanted this board to be perfectly flat and so underneath I had to mill it So you can see the lip under there so it stays flat and then goes flat against everything else and because these boards aren't going to go in the original holes i found the center on the bed the center on the board and we're just going to work from the center out to the sides until we're finished same at the other end so we'll take a look at what we had to do to these this board was originally it said it was three quarters so I had to put it in a planer and mill it down to get it down to three quarters and then I had to cut the lip on this end so that'll sit on the back of the back of the bed under the tailgate and the other end so it would go underneath the lip behind the cab I took a quarter inch off of there. You probably won't need to do that because you don't have that bracket. Most people don't have that big reinforcement bracket in the back of the bed. So you, that might be an option you don't have to do. Or maybe not a quarter inch. Let's see how it fits. And then these are inset three eighths and they're a quarter inch deep on each side to make it so those brackets will fit. I did that on a router so if we look at the holes where the bed used to be, the wood bed, actually this was a steel bed, I changed it over, which means I had to change this back piece, pretty much every part of the bed. The holes are set up for these, there were two six inch, one on each side, and then they went to eight inch all the way across. 
Well, this material only comes in six inch. Another thing is when you have a wood bed and you have to replace a board, all of those carriage bolts that go through, you have to crawl underneath and take them all out to replace the wood. It's a hell of a project. And you always find you've got a rotted board or a broken board when you need to do something else. You don't have time to fix it. And you're crawling underneath there with all the mess. Now, granted, it's all well undercoated and everything's going to be stainless. I still don't want to crawl under there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a fastener from the top. One of these guys, a stainless socket head screw, it's going to go down from the top and you'll thread it right in to these nut certs. As you can see, that's a lot of drilling and a lot of nut certs they have to go in. But when you're done, you just take a drill with this bit in it, you buzz these things out, and you can replace a board no problem if you get one tore up. Um, these aren't going to rot. Um, they're not going to fade. What's probably going to happen is I'll get some big monster gouges in them and want to replace one or ten or whatever. But then I just undo the screws on each side of the one and pull it out, and I'm good to go. So how are we going to... Um install these nut certs. There's a couple of different ways. Got this tool. Called the Astro oh, Astro 1442. I'm going to throw a link um, below for any of these parts, not just this one. Uh, the, the material, the, the nut certs, any, anything I use, I'll throw a list of links on the bottom so you can find it and uh, the, the plastic wood, whatever we'll call it. So basically you take the nut cert, you screw it on here, you stick it in the hole and you give this a pull and it crushes it. Now that works pretty good. Um, they make bigger ones. Uh, but I have 130 of these to do. And the stainless are a bitch. They're, they're hard to pull. So I'm going to go with a different tool. This other gizmo. I bought that. I did like 10 of them and went, holy shit, get rid of that. We got this guy. It's an air powered one. Much better tool. So they got, uh, this was, I want to say this was almost 200 bucks, but I'll get the right price. And I'll demo how to use it. In, um, yes, I, I am drinking beer at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's, It's like 104 today. So, you gotta, and I, and it's, but it's girly beer. Maybe I should do, maybe I get a sponsor. I could do like, like a, hello, we'll do this. Drink Flight Girly Beer. It tastes good for girly beer. It's, uh, why do they call it Flight anyway? Yingling Flight. F Light. It's F and Light. Yeah. I'm not going to get a sponsor. I'm good. I'll just, I'll just edit that out. But I'll never get a sponsor. So, basically you have the nut cert that goes in there. Several different sizes. This one comes with metric. There's my uh, 5 sixteenths. There's lots of videos on how to do this. I'm not going to beat this up. I'll give it a quick once over. So you thread that in there and it's a left-handed thread. It comes with the tools to put it together because they figure if you spend $200 on this, you probably can't afford your own tools. So it comes with a little wrench to tighten it. Don't over tighten it, you'll never get the damn thing out. And then screw this back in. So what it does, I'll use a steel one. The stainless ones are expensive. So you screw that in there, you stick it in the hole, and you probably should put the air on. Once you stick it in the hole, and you give it a squeeze, and that crushes that, and you're in business. So I'll do a quick demo. Screw him on there, stick it in the hole, 
stick it in a hole. And then you give it a squeeze. And now it's in there. Now the back of this tool, you can spin to unscrew it. Now what I'm probably gonna do is weld a little nut or something on the back of this so I can use my drill to buzz these things out because otherwise it's gonna take me a long time. So there you go. And then you screw your, uh, your screw in there. These are great for when you can't get behind something. But this is nice because I'll be able to use the drill and buzz all these things in and out. Make maintenance a breeze. Uh, well also, since I've undercoated everything and I've coated every piece of steel with 415 and then polyester primered it. So once I drill the hole, I'll spread a little undercoat in there and then I'll stick the fitting in to keep any moisture from getting in there. Maybe I'll just use roofing tar or something thick that'll get in there. So what's going to happen here, because I put the bolts underneath to hold the bed to the frame. That's going to cause it to ride up. So I'm going to go down and mark right on the side where the bolts are, and I'll just mill across the bottom to make a little hump there. probably don't need to do, but I'll do them anyway, because they, they're kind of sunk. I'll just go across the bottom. Right there, at every point. Just move a little line right across. So this will sit flush. I think I'll only have to do it on this board and the equivalent one on the other side. All right, I was going to get the router and do this. You can't see the back of this. And I'm going to go a lot quicker and easier like this way. So I made the saw the depth of these channels. I'm just going to go across it. not dangerous or anything. Unless <laughs> of course I slip and cut my pecker off. <laughs> Okay, we'll crawl under here because I was worried that I wasn't going to get another opportunity to screw my knees up. So I'll just take the marker. And do the same thing on both ends. I'm not sure that marker's any good. So I'll just do it twice.
You could also you could also take a spray paint can and do the same thing. But I can see I got my mark. So I'll cut that out and then slip it back. In. I got my line. I went. They did it with gold came out looking better than the black so I can see it pretty well all right let's speed this up a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and cut the outline out for the wheel well using the jigsaw that uh, material is pretty tough the jigsaw fought its way through there but it, it did all right now here's where I get in out of the truck a couple hundred times when I drop screws down on the ground I have to go down I drop the drill bits the screws the screwdriver every tool that possibly could imagine I also spilled some tar on the boards and that kind of panicked me a little bit. Here's where I'm uh, making the recesses for the bolts that hold the bed onto the truck. And anyway, I used the tar, I cleaned the tar up with lacquer thinner and it didn't damage the board, so that's good news. Um, also make sure that you're going to use some um, undercoat whenever you drill a hole for a nut cert. Make sure that goes in there so it doesn't rust again. Just clean up the last couple and we're almost there. And that's the final strip. Which is good because it's over 100 degrees. Okay, that about wraps up the job. Got it all done. I kind of jumped through some stuff, sped up the thing. I, I didn't want this to be a nine hour video. Plus, I do have a couple little minor things to do. But it's 95 degrees. I gotta get some beers in me and uh, post this video and move on to the next one. So let's take a look at where we're at. So a couple of things to mention. I, I don't remember if I mentioned this before. There's a funny slot in that wheel well on the right. That's going to have a, a crane that's going to lay down, just a pickup truck crane. It's going to fold over and lay down in that slot. Um, and that'll be another video. And the big dorky looking stainless chunk in the back there, that's going to be a bracket for a winch to pull up. I've got another flat piece. I'll throw it on the other video. But that guy's going to go up in front there and get tacked on and bolted up and a winch will be attached to it, which will be underneath the toolbox or, or through the toolbox. I haven't decided. So I can pull in, you know, an ATV, a, a riding lawnmower, a skid of beer, I don't know, groceries. Just, it's kind of like one of the, like the crane. It's, uh, I don't know why, but I, I know I want it. So uh, I did wet this down a few minutes ago. It's a, that's a, about the right finish. I dried it off. The reason I wet it down is I wanted to make sure this this uh, composite board can sometimes get really slick when it's wet and I wanted to make sure this didn't and it stuck pretty good. Something to look out for with these Chevy trucks and uh, I don't know if you can see it on the camera but normally with these Chevy trucks there's a, a sag right here in the middle the, they don't put enough support on them and when you have the wood in the steel bed especially it sags right here so I added an extra I split them up and added rows because it's usually just this guy in the center and it sags so I added two more underneath these rows and I arched it up like an eighth of an inch just enough to give it enough support so I put in some heavy stuff with my motorcycle and a bunch of other crap back here I don't end up with sagging but I didn't think you could see that eighth of an inch arch, but I'll be damned, you, you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it goes just slightly uphill. So the water will go both ways. You've you got to know it's there, I think. But I'm okay with it. We'll take a couple of shots. We'll walk around and get a couple of angles. See what we got here. A nice high one.
Maybe I'll make that. Right. And we'll try at an angle, another angle, a sexy angle from the back. There we go. There you go. Work it for me, baby. Come on. Work it for me. All right, I need that beer. I need that beer now.